pretty car. I, I like the design a lot more than the uh, CTS, but I guess the new CTS, when it comes out, is going to look just like this. Nice. Nice wheels. And then that's the big brother over there. That's the XTS. I've already driven that. Okay, so inside the ATS, I'm a pretty tall guy. When I sit in this car, um, the wheel comes just the, the highest point of the wheel comes like right above my legs. Now, most people aren't as tall as I am, so they won't have a problem with it. Behind me, rear seat space pretty much disappears behind my chair. There's definitely no space to get anything behind me in this car besides a child seat. Now, the passenger, most of the passengers, uh, if I were to take friends with me, they would probably sit about there, so that would give a person right behind them just a little bit of space, I guess. Uh, you'd, you'd, a kid would be okay back there, but um, four, I, I, I see four adults could sit here. Five, definitely not, because this middle seat definitely isn't a lot of space unless you have very short shoulders, as you can see. The middle seat is definitely not good enough for most adults. Other than that, um, the majority of things that you see are pretty much just like the a the uh, XTS. Um, they have this uh, glove compartment right here. It has an auxiliary jack, has USB. Pretty much standard for a car in this uh, category. I don't like the fact that the uh, cup holders you can't cover up. I like to be able to cover up cup holders because... If you get dirt and stuff inside them, it's like really hard to get it out. Some people drink coffee. When they drink coffee, it, it gets all messy. It gets all nasty. The uh, CD player that they have is here in the uh, hood. Most people don't even use CDs anymore, but for people who still do, they have it. There's only two buttons on the side of the uh, console. This is the engine start stop button, the hazard button, and then it has the Q system. This car has the uh, Q touch screen and um, it has the regular dash display. So when I turn it on, everything boots up. It says use transmitter to start. I'm going to just turn the radio on right now. Cadillac Q comes up. As you can see, it's starting. Now, if you want to see my uh, test drive of the XTS, you can see that video on uh, my YouTube, too. Um, now, the one thing that I've been bothered with since I first used Q was the fact that the touch buttons aren't these metal panels. The touch buttons are above the metal panel. It's a little counterintuitive. So you have to you have to touch in order to get it to do anything, and the problem, as you'll notice, is it's a little bit irresponsive. So when you touch it, sometimes nothing happens, but then if you push it even harder, if you push it harder, then it happens. Now when you try to slide your finger, sometimes it's responsive, sometimes it's not. What you can't hear is that there's a little bumping action that goes on behind the screen because there's a motor in the screen. And um, when, you, when it bumps, it lets you know that you have touched it and that something like a command has been entered. If you touch right here at the bottom, it folds up so that you can store CDs there. And there's also a lit USB port. Most likely what they expect you to do is either put your phone in this panel or they expect you to put your uh, phone in the uh, compartment right here next to you. So that this way it's out of your... Um, your vision and it charges off of USB while you use it. A lot of uh, people make a big deal about A2DP Bluetooth. Me personally, I don't like A2DP Bluetooth because sometimes it locks up my phone and then um, unless you have the phone plugged in while you're using it, the phone starts to die if you're playing from it. So it actually makes far more sense to just plug it into USB. The Bluetooth connection is nice, but for listening to music, it, to me, it's superfluous. It, it doesn't make sense. Um, when you want to put this uh, panel back, all you do is just slide, you just touch it a little, and it automatically slides back down. So other than that, the car is pretty nice inside. It has these uh, stainless steel or aluminum, it's like an aluminum inlet inlay. Uh, there's different types of inlays that you can get. In fact, there's a, a large combination of them. You can, there's over 10 different combinations that you could possibly get. This car has the dark gray interior. 
if you're buying a Cadillac, I don't know if you'd really want the gray interior, because the uh, gray interior is a little dull, a little boring. And, of course, I already uh, look at the uh, Q system in the XTS review I did, and uh, you can download apps, and it's similar, it works like the iPhone and iPad does, like you can drag and drop um, icons to different places, it has Pandora, and uh, it, it's pretty much designed right behind the iPad and iPhone iOS. The only downside is it's a little slower than iOS is, so when you go from screen to screen, it's, it's just a tad slower. What I do like is that when you put your hands near it, there's a proximity sensor that lets the computer know that you're about to use it. So, if you're on, like, say, the uh, radio, like, it'll, it'll actually sense your hand coming near it. Or, if you don't want to use your hands while you're driving, you can just touch the button, and you can speak commands. Let's see. Say a command, or say help. Tune to Sirius XM 45. Tune to 44XM, is that correct? Yes. Tuning. And then you can listen to XM45. That's the hip hop channel. Okay, so let's see. This car has the 2.54 liter engine that's 202 horsepower with direct injection you can uh, read my review on ePenions if you want to see how um, I talked about the 3.6 liter that I drove this is the uh, 2.5 so this is kind of a base it's $35,890 so it's about $36,000 before you factor in like taxes dealer fees and whatnot let's see the backseat space so that when I was sitting in the car, that's how much space you'd have behind me if you were sitting in the car. Now, if you notice, there's a hump right here. And that hump pretty much makes it so that nothing besides a child seat would really be able to put legs right there. Now, the car, the uh, door is slammed shut with a very high quality feel. I'm not crazy about the touch and feel of the leather, but it works. For, um, you know, a car in this price point, it's actually pretty good. Let's see about the, the seats. It's like a pull latch right here. I'm not sure exactly what this is. I think this is an anchor for a child seat. Well, let's see the trunk and the engine bay. Okay, here's the trunk. Okay, ATS, City Cadillac. Okay, so it's a pretty big trunk, pretty big pass-through. You don't get a spare tire, you only get a tire compressor. But this is the base model, mind you. Let me see about the uh, under the hood. It's a nice engine. Looks good. It's not the twin turbo version or the 3.6, but it's a pretty nice engine. Hmm. Yeah, it looks good. Now, the Cadillac XTS, as you've already seen, I videotaped uh, me doing 0 to 60 in a Cadillac ETS, uh, uh, XTS. And, you know, there's so many damn letters, it's like it's hard to keep track. But anyway, I did a 0 to 60 video of the XTS. And uh, I also did a ride along, and I also did a uh, version of the livery edition of the XTS. 
And this, I mean, this is a beautiful car. This is exactly what GM should be turning out from now until forever. Or until, you know, cars advance even more. They should be turning out this as a product. This is definitely nicer, and it feels better inside than the Lincoln MKS. It's definitely a lot higher in quality and feel than the uh, Chrysler 300s, which is actually my favorite for a couple of other reasons, which I'll get into in my reviews, the written reviews. But my problem is, GM never goes whole hog on anything. It's like, even with the Platinum Edition, you see these seat these seat headrests there's buttons on the sides of these chairs but you can't control the seat headrests using the chair buttons because they have a button right here that lifts them up and down now mercedes i believe in almost all of their cars their headrests are powered and even in hyundai's uh equus which would basically be you know along with the genesis would be competition for a car like this if you want to consider hyundai competition with cadillac they give you powered headrests. Why didn't GM take a look and say, you know what, Mercedes E-Class is doing it. Why don't we do that too? If you have a luxury car, you want to have stuff that, you know, you can say that, hey, no other car has got this. You know? Now, you look, these are the seat controls. Now, this is the power lumbar. This is the seat up and down tilt. This is the seat back and forth. Had this been a BMW, this waterfall cushion that pops out to... It extends in order to um, give your legs a little bit more support, making it feel a little bit more like a couch. Well, had this been a BMW, this part would have been powered too. Why is it that they couldn't have made it so that there's a switch that allows the headrest to be powered and the waterfall cushion to be powered? Ultimately, it's, it's all the little things that are the reason why... Cadillac has such a hard time competing with BMW and Mercedes because it's like they give you a lot, but they just don't give you what the competition's giving you. Hyundai has figured it out. What Hyundai does is they simply copy the competition and they make a car that looks just like the competition and has almost all the same features as the competition. Cadillac does things their own way and sometimes they end up coming up short for $50,850 and sometimes they end up getting a good hit. Now, considering how much space you get in this car, even if somebody like me is sitting up front, because if I'm sitting comfortably, that's how I'd sit. This car is really, really cool, considering how much size and space you get. But then that brings me to the next problem. It's the engine. A 3.6 liter V6 engine. There's no turbo version available, and there's no V8 version available. This car, had this car had a V8 available, you could have seriously gotten some speed in this thing, just like the Lincoln MKS. Instead, take a look at my uh, 0 to 60 video, and what you end up finding is that it takes almost 8 to 9 seconds to get this car from 0 to 60. I think that is, um, that's not good. Yeah, you see, this is the V6, the VVT injection engine. The direct injection VVT, and this car, this is basically the same engine that you'll find in uh, GM's V6 trucks, and you'll also find this in the Buick LaCrosse, and it's just not powerful enough. See, this should be nothing less than a 350 horsepower engine in these cars, or at least a twin turbo V6, or even a regular old North Star V8, which I understand that they're getting rid of because of fuel economy, but it wasn't necessarily a terrible engine, especially to haul a car this size. See, a smaller, the ATS can use a 3.6 to give it performance. But a car this big, you really, when you buy a car, some, some people who are rich, they, they don't just want to get low fuel economy or high fuel economy. What they want is they want to feel that they can race people. And that's the bottom line. Now, even though that they're, you know, lowering speed limits to 40 and 50 miles an hour in most areas, some people don't care. Some people still want to be able to do 70 and 80 reliably, and they want to be able to hold high speeds, which I understand. Other than that, it's a beautiful car.